next pick who do you have um going before Sohan for the Knicks at 11 um uh we could talk about Branham sure <laughs> oh, so you wait so wait you got Branham wait wait do you have wait a minute wait a minute I gotta ask you have Branham before Sohan I I don't anymore I don't anymore I did um okay but I, I I've moved Branham uh down a little bit because I just I just really dove deep uh into his game I I did uh, an episode uh strictly about Branham on on the draft act podcast so there are things that I do really like about his game and and that I think make him a really good prospect, but there are things that I think people aren't necessarily talking about uh, when it comes to him because they like the offense so much. So I've moved him down a little bit, but there's still a lot to like. Okay. All right. Cause I, I'm just, I was watching the episode of Corey. He was flaming <laughs> him. So I'm, <laughs> I'm shocked that he's on this list right now, but go ahead. I'm, I'm, I'm going to let Corey rock. Go ahead. Cause you know, draft boards change day to day, week to week. Depending yeah. on what yeah. things happen, you re, you really look at footage. You go, well, you know what? Maybe I didn't see something. And also, sometimes you know you know how I learn about draft prospects. Sometimes I learn uh, I learn about draft prospects when people disagree. Like I feel like hmm. I learn the most when people disagree because then it's like you see their best case for each side, and I'm like, okay, I can see why this might not be the pick or what what I ignored before that can be overcome that downside that you spoke up. But let's let's get into it, Corey. All right. So what I still like about Branham for the Knicks, like Ryan, you mentioned the Knicks need shooters like this kid could shoot the rock, you know, and like at every level, he was massively efficient at Ohio State this year. Like he could shoot it off the catch. He could shoot it off the bounce. He's smooth. He's not a guy like Ivy who's relying on athleticism to get to his spots. He's patient. He's crafty. You know, he could do everything at his own pace. And I love guys like that. High field players who just know how to get to their spots, can rise up, and whether they got a hand in their face or not, they could still knock down tough shots. Those are the type of shots that you need somebody to hit at the end of games. Right. Um, You know, he's 6'5 with a 6'10 wingspan, so he's got length. And he reminds me of a shorter Chris Middleton offensively. Mm. Just smooth, like he's never going to blow you away. He's probably not going to end up on house of highlights, but he's going to get his points because he knows how to get to his spots and he does it confidently. I love that he could play off the ball. Who knows what's going to happen with Julius, right? But you still are. I'm assuming that he's going to be on the roster. I'm assuming RJ is going to be on the roster. And I'm assuming that, you know, quickly is going to be a guy who handles more of the ball handling responsibility. And that doesn't even speak to like guys like Derek Rose. Right. So he can just as easily, play off the ball and I think early on that's a good role for him because rookies there's a learning curve most rookies suck when they come into the league even the high end high lotto picks they don't know what they're doing they're adjusting to the speed of the game NBA basketball is really hard and when you move up a level there's an adjustment period so the fact that they're the Knicks have guys that could alleviate some of that pressure and not put him in the role of a lead guard I love that and I love that he could thrive I like that he can cut I like that he could spot up I like he could shoot it off movement a little bit. I I just like his scoring package. And then when you do put the ball in his hands, he's not just a scorer. I think he's got pretty good feel as a playmaker, as a passer. He's not going to be hitting you with Trey Young, Luka Doncic, like come (laughs) off the screen, weak side, one hand dribble. He's not doing that stuff necessarily, but he could hit like Mitch on the roll as a lob threat if, if Mitch is returning. You know, he could hit Obi as a lob threat. He could do a lot of the stuff that that is uh makes for efficient play offensively now where you were talking about i started flaming him a little bit and this is one of the reasons i actually like the fit uh although i think he 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 would struggle to get consistent playing time especially given the fact that you know i didn't talk about grimes who i absolutely love defensively i'm i'm concerned because i think he's one of the worst defenders uh at the guard spot in the lottery discussion for sure, really? but maybe, yeah, but maybe even in the top 20, top 25, I, I think that, you know, he's so, he showed such improvement offensively from like January on, had these big explosive games and just was so efficient and played so like uh, above his age so maturely that a lot of people have been ignoring the fact that he really cannot defend anybody Mm. you know and and it's weird sometimes 
for guys that you see have like such high feel on one side of the ball. Yeah. And then you go to the other side of the ball and they look lost. Like the thing about him is like, you know, he very much does not have that dog in him on that side of the ball. He is not getting Uh. up in your shirt. He ain't getting in your chest. Like he's not crowding your space. He's not Mm. making you uncomfortable. He's not doing the things that like, Tibbs wants you to do. He's not going to like, he's not, like that he all. plays flat. Like yeah. Tibbs is going to be yelling ice, ice, ice. And he's going to be allowing this dude to get to the middle, you know, like, cause he doesn't shade you to his side. And when he does shade you to his side, it's because he's wide open. He's like open in the doors. He's, he's not cutting off your space so he can recover. He's just, his stance is so wide open that it's just a free lane to the hoop. And, uh, and then off ball, he's just like, he don't know, he doesn't know where to be, but that's stuff that could be taught. Right. Like that's stuff that when you when you're young, you might not understand. And right. a guy like him at Ohio State, like he's not getting pulled for that because he's bringing so much offensively. He's going to get pulled for that. You know, if he's oh, late yeah. on rotations, if Tibbs was his coach, he's going to learn. He's going to realize like, oh, if I want to get on the floor, I got to go and defend because he should be able to. He's six ten wingspan. Like he should be able to defend multiple positions. He's mobile. Like he could slide his feet if he wants. He just he's just not like that gritty guy that like you expect Uh, on that end. Uh, But I think that he brings a ton of value offensively and I really like his fit. Yeah. I I don't, I mean, when you get to this part of the draft, I do think that a lot of the times guys are so comparable that you can sometimes go for fit more than best player or best talent available because it gets to a point where like, there might be a log jam and you might not never see that better talent because they're stuck behind somebody, right? Like there, right. there's variables that go into it, but I, I like his fit. I like that he has talent. I like that he has room to improve. I like that Tibbs is a coach who values defense so much. And even if, you know, if he's drafted, I think Knicks fans will be disappointed that maybe he isn't playing the amount of minutes that they expect for a lottery pick to play. But I think in the long run, it makes you better uh, guys like him who need it. Yeah. So I, I do, I do like Branham as a fit with the Knicks. And, and I think he's, you know, a guy who definitely could, could grow with RJ and IQ and Obi and, and that crew. You know what? I've heard about AJ Griffin, right. And, and his defense being bad. He looked, I mean, you talk about his defense. I looked at his defense and I'm just like, he makes me scared. Like if, the, if he fell to us and we picked them, I'd be Really excited that we have a, like a not down shooter, but I'm just like he looks like a turnstile to me. You you just said that Malachi <laughs> has a worst has oh, might yeah. be the worst wing defense wing in the draft. Does he compare to Griffin to me? Like to me, Griffin Look, looks like he's worse. If you want me to talk bad about AJ, you came to the wrong person. He, he's he's like top three on my board. Oh, so, okay. I was, yeah, I'm, I'm yeah. Just, the, AJ's my guy. I, like, my bad. Right. That's, that's my guy. <laughs> <laughs> like AJ missed two years uh, of high school ball you know, COVID year and injury, um, went and trained with his dad down in Tampa. Um, and then got hurt coming into the year, like with Duke and he was back for the beginning of the season, but, uh, he came into a weird spot where like everybody had their roles established. So that's why he was like a knockdown shooter playing off ball, but like for him defensively, he missed a lot of developmental time and like a lot of defense is getting reps. Mm -hmm. And like, cause there's only so much you can learn watching film, right? Like you still have to be able to react out on the court when things are happening, like, you know, at game speed. And when you miss that much time from high school and then, you know, you hurt yourself in training camp and you got to play catch up adjusting from like not playing high level ball for years to going straight into the ACC. You probably not, you're only going to show flashes probably as a defender. Like you're, you're going to be raw. You know what I mean? Like, so to me, AJ, there's a situation where I still see him as being a guy who could be a positive defender down the line because that dude is a brick wall. He's long as hell. And, you know, I I think he was coming back from a knee injury this year. And I think he's coachable. He's, he's willing to learn. He's willing to put effort. I've seen flashes. I saw flashes of him staying in front of quick shifty guards and just, gobbling him up just you can't go anywhere i saw flashes of him switching on to big men holding his position in the post forcing them into like tough 12 foot hook shots i saw you know him reacting quickly and getting all the way across the court it's not an effort thing with him okay it's he has to learn it's not him just he doesn't want to play i can take that 
he has to learn how to play. And there's a difference. Like there are times where Branham just doesn't seem like it's a part of a game that he's interested in playing. Like he's been mm. off ball. He'll do that little, you know, when you're playing pickup and you've been playing for two, two hours, right. And you know, you're supposed to dig to the free throw line to help out. And you're just, you just do that little reach. Yeah. The, like yeah. it's a little fake yeah, reach. Yeah. Like, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> like, I, I tried. Yeah. <laughs> that is, he, he does that a little bit too often for me. So like, that's the type of stuff that to me separates, like why I think AJ has potential as a defender versus Branham, where I think, He's got to have a change in mentality. AJ's just got to learn how to play. All right. I, I, I can take that because I see that with Obi even. Like, Obi doesn't have the technique, but he's going to try his ass off and get these, you know, recovery blocks and, and do whatever he can, technique bad or whatever, but he's going to get the effort. So I, I can I can, I can can deal with that. Um, hey, uh, Roy, anything to add to that? Ryan as well? Um, look, man, let me just be honest with you. If you can't play defense, I'm not looking at you. <laughs> the, reason, the reason I say that is because y'all gotta be real. You come into the Knicks plant having to learn how to play defense, you ain't gonna play for like two years under tip. You gotta wait. Yeah. I mean, let's be real, that's what happened. So Obi got on the floor because he's learned to play defense in his end of his first year. And he and this is what Coach Tibbs always said: he has to affect winning. Okay, so you're affecting winning with Thibodeau first on the defensive end. And so unless you're Julius Randle, you can do whatever you want. Or if you're Emmanuel Quickly, you can do whatever you want. But other than those two guys, he, you have to come with some defense. So I am looking, yes. And I agree with, again, I agree with Corey. Um, and, and, and in terms of, okay, A.J. Griffin has the template, the body, the, 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 the raw ability to become a really good defender. You know, he does. He's 6'6", 220. He can muscle guys. He's really going to, he's got all of those tools. But if you're talking about the New York Knicks and Tom Thibodeau, yes, he has tools. I'm going to tell you right now, he would spend half this season in the G League. That's what's going to happen. Okay. If you're talking about uh, Branham, (laughs) I mean, I like his game. He's got a really nice game offensively, but he would never see the court under Thibodeau. He would just be banished to the G League until he learned how to play defense. That's that's just how this guy goes. So there's none of this, you know, oh, yes, we can work with him. No, no. <laughs> Thibodeau's going to say to the bench, to the G League, come back to me when you can play defense. He's very, very hard on his rookies. He's yeah. very, very hard. On so you got to take that into account when we're looking at these guys. He, he's not going to just let you come in the court and say, okay, I'll work with you and you did. You got so much. Up. No. If you don't play no defense, you're not playing. Yeah, I mean, I personally don't even mind it considering our roster right now. Like, I, I, I like give Grimes and and uh and Cam some burn while while they develop and then come in next year and then see what we have. I, I don't even mind yeah. that to, to be honest. Yeah, with you. that's just why I don't even I don't even yeah. press it like that. Like I would normally would. Like when we drafted Kevin Knox, you, you, Ryan, you was with me, yeah. and they had the the mo- and he saw all the motor issues. Me and him were we we we, we flamed them. You flamed. <laughs> I mean, I mean, I was I was questioning um, Perry and and Fisdale at that point because they were so hyped on him, and I was and I was watching. I was like, I don't see it here, but I, it here. I was taking it by faith, saying, okay, they'll give him a chance to develop. But I just didn't see it, especially with both the Bridges boys on the board at that time. Yeah, I was so, a Miles guy. I was. Yeah. A- <laughs> I could not believe that they did that. But um, as far as you know, these kids we're looking at here. This, you know, you got to come again with Griffith. What is it that gets him to the league? What is it that stands out? Says he come, he's an NBA player or he's going to be. To me, he's 6'6, 220, and he's only 19, 18 years old. To me, you're starting out with a body like that. And he had the athletic ability before the injuries. And, I, and I'm going to assume he's going to get him back. So, and then, of course, he's a tremendous shooter when he has an open shot. So, those things will get him to the league. But as far as getting him on the court, he, I don't see him playing, you know, his first year uh, with Thibodeau. He may be another team, but not with the New York Knicks. So you got, um, you know, Ob- not Obi Toppin, you got Quentin Grimes. I mean, Quentin Grimes was a tremendous defender at Houston, right? He was a tremendous defender at Houston, and he could hit the, the, the open jump shot. So for him to do it in New York, I'm not surprised that he's doing that because you kind of knew he was coming in like that. Right. And I expect them to trade Evan Fournier and let, uh, Q play that two position full time, and you're going to really see something. But if anybody it. wants time, they got to play some defense. If they want to get on the floor at all, you got to play some defense in New York. Absolutely, absolutely. And and like yeah. I said, I don't mind it being if it's an effort thing. That's one thing. But he seems like he 
Corey's telling me that um it's not an effort thing. It's a it's a you know a mentality like a, a learning thing. So I'll take that. Ryan, you have something to say? Yeah. Um. As for Branham, like I'm, I'm pretty I'm pretty much with Ron that like he wasn't even on my board because when I watched like clips of him and and I saw like the defense and and just you know his mentality on defense, I already know that if he came to the Knicks, Clyde would be saying Matador D at least twenty times a game. <laughs> and the I was like, this is, I already knew that was like a goal right there. But um. But with AJ Griffin, like that's why I was kind of high on him because like it's it's not even just a shooting ability. Like I know people getting him for his defense, but I watched a few Duke games this season, and like Corey said, he he showed flashes. Like at times he looked like he looked like a capable defender. To, so to me, okay. I'm like, it's just somebody. It's just that he needs a coach to bring it out of him on a consistent basis for him to defend like that all the time. And so I'm like, I to me, like I think that's fixable. So it's so I mean the fact that he can shoot light, shoot the lights out, and on top of that, you know, his defense is just something he needs to work on. You know, he gets the right coaching, he can defend. So to me, that's why I always had AJ Griffin high on my board like that. Got you, got you. Okay. Actually, okay, this is why I like these conversations. Now I'm high, I'm a little bit higher in my brain on AJ Griffin than I was last week. That's why I like having these conversations. I'm all right, all right, all right. All right, thank you, Corey. And shout out, shout out to the Boston Nick gunshots for you, Boston Nick. Um, I'm gonna save the questions for later, but um, but uh, so stay tuned, Boston Nick. We want to get through his big board first, and then we're gonna we're gonna head back and we're gonna answer your question about uh Ryan Collins and, and Kai Soto. Okay, all right, cool. <laughs> but Jason M says a two dollar super chat as well. So shout out to Jason, uh, one of our regulars. It says a two dollar super chat. Says draft AJ. You can't pass up talent because of tips. He's like, that's him hey, saying he believes Tibbs is going to be going anyway, so you might as well just get some talent. No, let me let me say with AJ and Tibbs, Tibbs has had Adrian Griffin Sr. on his staff for many years. <laughs> oh, connection right there. Wait a minute. Wait a it, minute. I, I promise you, Tibbs knows AJ's game very, very well. I promise you. They... I bet I, I I bet they you know he's known him since he was a little kid coming to practices in Chicago probably in Minnesota mm. all that I I they work together they have a very very close relationship okay so Ooh. nepotism might help us out right now they dig <laughs> all right <laughs> you know CAA little CAA, nepotism you know exactly. the whole well, the full mean, circle might as well they did they did exactly I I just said that wrong Jaden CAA too. Okay. <laughs> we all know Colin Berman, he's the apple of our eyes. So, <laughs> <laughs> hey, I wouldn't mind that either. All right, let's, let's keep it moving. Who's next right. on, on your board? 